and we are live. Hello, good evening and welcome to Thursday here on VaporTrails.tv. My name is Dave Dawn and this is not the Here's Hour, this is VT Talk. And it's a, an international VT Talk tonight. Hands across the sea, if you well, across the ditch anyway. Um, tonight, Sav and I are joined by Alan DePau, who is the vice chairman, I believe it is, Alan? Of, uh, vice president. Vice, pre vice, oh, vice president. I do apologise. Vice president of uh, Edus, which is yes. the the French Vapors Association. What's Edus stand for, Alan? Uh, the Independent Association of Electronic Cigarette Users, and the word "independent" is critical. They we are not astroturf. We <laughs> that that's a phrase we all use quite often. You will note that. Although Alan is in France, he is in fact a Brit living in France, are you not? Correct. And how long have you been there? Since 1999. Which was a very good year. It was the year before the 2000s started. So we've got Alan tonight from, from Edus, and we've also got in the cat house, as she usually is, the effervescent loveliness. Don't even go there. The bountifully beautilicious babe that is the one and only slightly bald tonight by the looks of things. <laughs> Sav. Where's the hair, kid? Eh? The hair's under the hat. It was doing me a head in, so it got put away. I thought, no, I can't be doing with this tonight, so the hat came out. I thought you must have been outside helping the BT men put the uh, infinity cables in. I was so tempted when I seen them, I thought, well, I'm going to go park over there today instead. But that didn't happen. No, didn't I happen. parked on the drive instead. Well, it's going to be it's going to be a good show tonight. We're going to find a, find out a little bit more about Edus and what they've been up to and what they've been doing and what's been happening in France because that's quite important. We're going to be looking at a little bit of um, correspondence from DG Sankoth that's been achieved under a freedom of information request from Neil McLaren. Um, it is Neil, yes, is Neil McLaren. So we'll be having a look at that. And Dr. F you may remember, how long is it ago? Three weeks or two weeks that Dr. Farsalinos was with us? Oh, three weeks. About three weeks he was with us and he did say that there was a review of, of all of the evidence coming out. And it has. And we've got it and we'll give you links to it. And that's, I understand Dr. Farsalinos himself will be with Team Talk next week. Yes, yes he will. So that's something to look forward to. And... You might also remember that a wee while ago there was an ASIG summit in London that was extremely good and has had some very, very positive outcomes. Apparently, Ash Scotland wants to do the same and that is going to be an absolute... Yes, no, I did it on purpose so that I didn't swear live on screen. Yes, so hello, good evening and welcome to VT Talk here on Thursday the 13th of February, the day before Valentine's Day, and it's all good. So I, I want to go straight to Alan because what I've seen over the last six months certainly has been massive activity on behalf of Edus in France, and I'm pretty sure you've had an awful lot to do with that, Alan. So... Tell me more about Edus, how many members it's got, what its lines of communications are, how easy it is to mobilise the troops and the forces when they're needed and all of that kind of stuff. We're essentially a, a team and I uh, happen to be the, the international face of it. But what we do is essentially, it really is teamwork. And um, we, we were set up by the person who originally set up the France's largest forum. And that forum is extremely successful. It's very well known. Uh, last year, when I joined 12 months ago, it had some 25,000 members. Now it has some 55,000 members. And uh, on the back of that, and related to that, uh, key activists, including um, uh, its leader, 
created the association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, the reputation of of the president who's called Brice Le Poutre is such that um, he federates people and uh, we we don't really have any conflict um, in the way the association is run, which is extremely fortunate because that's not always the case. Mm. And uh, we started off um, by um, being asked to assist uh, an official uh, body in preparing a report on electronic cigarettes. I wasn't there at the time. I came at the back end of that process. But the, the association in its first days were reviewing piles of documents from this organization called the OFT, uh, France's Office for uh, uh, Combating Tobacco Addiction, and transformed the document and completely transformed from then on the discourse about electronic cigarettes. And we launched a petition shortly afterwards uh, for mainly for French-speaking vapors in Europe. And that uh, collected 40,000 signatures which also was seen as a major success. We also collected quite quickly in our membership, we're very fortunate to have um, some leading health professionals and very well-known health professionals who no, 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 have no, not just advised us, um, but also advised the rest of the medical community and in some cases government. And because of these links, um, the electronic cigarettes started to get a better image. And I think it's fair to say that some 12 months ago, the entire media was highly suspicious of us. And now probably a majority, over 50%, um, are with us. And that's not been because of what we, the association, have done exclusively. We've supported what other people have done, and we've had strong links, again, with medical professionals who are listened to by the media. We started being invited, and we're frequently invited, especially our president and uh, another vice president, my colleague, who is much better than I am uh, with French media. And, and the whole approach that uh, public opinion is taking to us is, is dramatically different. The words even of our um, health minister that were very negative some six, seven months ago have shifted. They, they don't love us, but they're recognizing that there is an issue about um, risk reduction. Electronic cigarettes play a major part. And some of the threats um, may have been removed. Mm -hmm. So if we look back over 12 months, things have improved a lot. If we look back one month, there's a lot of cause for frustration, as there is with you, as there is across Europe because we're still threatened by regulation which will have a probably a different effect in France. But we're worried about uh, uh, the creation of a new monopoly that the government may be tempted to set up. Yes. Of, uh, of e-cigarettes specialized boutiques. Um, we're certainly worried about a ban on internet sales, international internet sales. Uh, we're worried about um, the restrictions on new product development. And, I started, as I said, on um, a reasonable product. I think it was a reasonable product uh, in term. It, it was a, uh, e uh, a sorry, a cigar like. Got somewhat bored with it and moved on to this thing, as many of us have done. And it provides fun. Um, it's of course a, a large volume tank because they need refilling less often. Yes, they're yes. easier to refill. Mm -hmm. And um, naturally, I use large bottles because they're an awful lot cheaper. And it's easier to use one bottle to refill all these tanks. Well, I mean, you, 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 you're not alone there because the, that's the size bottle that I regularly buy. And if anybody thinks that's a 10 mil bottle, think again. That's half a litre. That's the size I get. That's the size I want to be able to get. And that apparently stands a damn good chance of being taken away. But of course... France is, is a very different market from the UK because you don't have um, the, the cigar likes so much over there, certainly not over the last 12 months, have you? No, we don't. And um, the, in fact, I think it's something only about 4 or 5% of vapors purchase throwaways. The um, cigar likes that are, are semi throwaways are either of poor quality. 
and available mainly from uh, tobacconists or um, uh, only available on the internet. Mm. So they're not particularly well known. Most people purchase um, uh, ego type products and they'll purchase them mainly from specialized shops. I think we have far more of those than in Britain. I'm not sure about the market in Britain, but in France, we thought at the beginning of last year that by the end of 2013 there may be about 300 shops. In fact, there were at least 600. And the trade association, I think, is quoting something like 1,500 of these specialised shops. Good grief, that's, so that's an awful lot of specialised... Yeah, 1,500 specialised shops. I mean, France is it's bigger than the UK, but it's not that much bigger. What's the population over there? It's only just above that of the UK. It's about 66 million. Ge geographically, it's the largest country in the EU, of course, but yes. uh, the population is about the same as Britain's. Well, that's, that's fascinating. 1,500. I've got no idea how many bricks and mortar stores we have here. You look very concentrated, Sav. What's <laughs> happening? Oh, I've just followed so many different things at the same time. But we've got a couple of things coming in from chat. I mean, Mark Shaw said uh, it just shows the French certainly do know how to pull things together. Um, Liam D. Vapor said, this all sounds great. I'm really glad to be hearing this. Steffi has said, I'd re I really like how the media seem to be in France. The media situation in Germany is getting worse. Mm. Um, Lena Marie said, wasn't a law passed in France that makes it so only tobacconists can sell e-cigs now, though? She thought she heard something like that. Oh, that's where I want to go, because I, I, I think those of us in the UK probably have a bit of difficulty in understanding exactly how France operates. Isn't, isn't I mean, put me right if I'm wrong, but there's some kind of licensed monopoly for uh, what, what I used to call a tabac, where you, you would go to buy your cigarettes. So that's it's, all. It's still called the Tabac. And yes, they have a monopoly, as indeed uh, pharmacists have a monopoly over all medicines. There's no such thing as over-the-counter uh, medicines in France. Uh, the tobacconists have been wanting to get their exclusive hands on electronic cigarettes. Well, there have been motions in, um, in the National Assembly in Parliament to that effect and they have been rejected. Uh, there's always the fear that they will, will succeed. I, I suspect um, they'll fail. Mm. I don't think there's much appetite in France for uh, giving them the monopoly. The arguments against are, are completely obvious. Um, when you go into a tobacconist, it's really only to buy tobacco. Uh, unlike a British news agent where you go for a variety of products, you go there for tobacco. And it's like um, seeking uh, the antidote to the poison from the same outlet. It makes no sense to give them the exclusive sale. We have no objection, of course, to them selling electronic cigarettes if they want. Um, for customers who are happy to not receive the slightest bit of advice, you know, you sell a pack of fags and in two seconds flap. You flap down the money, you slap down the packet, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So anyone seeking advice, help, or to level nicotine, want to try a range of tastes, better look elsewhere. So I think it's, it's, it is very unlikely that they will get the monopoly. On the other hand, uh, giving a monopoly to uh, licensed, specialised shops is, is not impossible. So is, it, I did this, is this a, a peculiarly French thing that, that they like licensing and having monopolies of, of just you know, so you know that, that if you want an e-cig, you go to a licensed e-cig seller um, and that's the only place you can get them. They're not like, are they likely to be in, in supermarkets and, and places like that? Or, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it seems quite an alien culture to many of us in the UK where you could go to the corner shop, for instance, and pick up an e-cig, a packet of fags, some anodines, some corn plasters, and hemorrhoid cream, we've got to bring that in in case Chris Choi's watching. Um, and at the same time, get your paper and a lad's mag, a bar of chocolate and a loaf of bread. That, is, is, is that likely to happen um, as far as France is concerned, that you would go into a, a supermarket or a hypermarket and be able to buy e-cigs there? Is that, is that going to be the case? I'm still reeling from that terrible idea of buying bread from the, the local news agents. Uh, absolutely not. As far as um, a culture of monopoly is concerned, I, I guess it exists in France. There are a lot of monopolies. 
uh, taxi drivers at the moment are in, uh, up in arms about their own monopoly. Uh, yes, um, it's, it's a natural inclination to seek better to control uh, a product uh, through that mechanism. So it is a fear, and, and as with all monopolies, it's, it can't operate if the borders are open. That's why we're extremely worried concerning a uh, possible ban on internet sales. Well, yes, because um, as I well remember, the, the, the current, and has been for a while if I've got it right, there is a current limit of 20 milligrams for, for e-juice in France. Yes. But I do know a lot of French vapors who um, buy abroad on, on the internet. And of course, if the current nonsense goes through unchecked, that might be a door that's that's close to them, and I believe the French government's looking at that as well, aren't they? They're probably looking at a ban on internet sales. We're not getting much feedback from them. Uh, as far as the twenty milligrams is concerned, um, most French vapors would not be affected because that's the level that exists at the moment. We know, you and I know, that it excludes at least a fifth, according to Dr. Farsalinas, mm. at least a fifth of smokers. And it's likely to be a f quite a significantly higher percentage, since his survey covered the entire world, including countries which had that limit or lower. Mm. So um, we, we would like the, the level to be increased, although the majority of vapors don't think it's a major issue because it doesn't concern them. Yeah, that's 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 one of the things that worries me a lot. I mean. I suppose, I can, I can see the point, if somebody's happy on 12 milligrams and they say a limit of 20, it's going to be, well, I, that's fine, I'm okay, I'm all right. Um, and if they constantly use something like a Vision Ego or whatever that, that's got a capacity of less than two mils, they're going to think, well, yeah, okay, I'm on 12 milligram juice, I use a 1.8 milliliter, I'm fine, this is not going to affect me. Problem with it is, of course, I sit here with five and six and seven milliliter tanks using 36, 45 and 54 and I dare bet I'm not alone. I dare bet there's a lot of people would find the kind of stuff that I use a little bit more satisfying and a little bit more puttable down. I know there's a lot of people like sucking on them all day and that's good, that's cool. Um, it just, it just, you know, you've got to think of everybody else, haven't you really? Um, the I'm all right Jack thing doesn't, it never sits well with me. Savvy so looking concentrated again. There uh, again, <laughs> lots of stuff going on. But I mean, Heiko's just said with the devices available to me on the day I started, 363 days ago, 20 milligrams would have excluded him. Mm. And that's that's the case for an awful lot of people in chat. I'm, I'm, I must admit, I am wondering how many people came in on 24 milligram juice. There's, there's got to be a fair few people in the UK at any rate came in on 20 milligram juice and I know for a certain fact because I've spoken to vendors in the UK who have uh, very large clientels in France. They ship an awful lot of 24 and 36 and 32 into France. Which actually begs a question, is, again, is there, is there much in the way of home mixing goes on in France then? Alan. Uh, that is to the percentage. I, I know that our forum has a very, very active section of people who give each other help concerning do-it-yourself. Uh, so there are quite a few. Um, I know there are quite a few customers of, um, I won't mention the name, but the Polish outlet that sells uh, an awful lot of base liquids. Mm. So it seems very active. Uh, and certainly a lot of people are asking for help on the subject. It, on the on, on the subject of, of nicotine level, it might be of interest also that um, I was speaking to a, a doctor who's often interviewed in the media and who's very keen not only on electronic cigarettes but, only, but also on patches. And she told me that she advises her, um, I was about to say her clients, her patients, uh, not only to take up the electronic cigarettes but patches as well in order to up the nicotine absorption. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Isn't that, that's dual fueling in another direction altogether? Isn't that, I can, do you know, I, I, can, I can, I have tried the patches many years ago and I found that they just left me with a nasty red blotch on the arm and didn't do a great deal for me. 
but I could see hmm it's a thought it might work in conjunction with indescribably shockingly low nicotine juice it could work it's not a bad way to go I don't suppose it keeps keeps that particular doctor with a foot in both camps which is possibly not a bad thing although there is that little bit of you medicalizing it. It, it that just always grates on me a little bit um but we'll, we'll see how that one you don't concentrate it again sav <laughs> it's the hat <laughs> i'm not used to this I, I i don't normally see that concentration quite so quick what's happening now i've obviously taken a while to tune in today but there's a lot of people talking about the strength that they've started on right um a lot of people are saying yeah they started on 24 they would have started on 36 if it was available at the time uh-huh um and laurian has just said well um Professor West wants E6 to be stronger and more addictive than cigarettes. And I thought, yes, I remember him saying that, he does. Yes, it, it, in fact, he didn't just say it, he shouted it long and loud. He did. And he, he, he even banged his fist on the table, if I recall correctly. I think he may be right. Um, and he wasn't alone either, because didn't Jean-Francois Etter say the mm -hmm. same thing? Yeah. And as I recall, my friend Jacques Louezek also said, did I pronounce that right? Well, very good indeed. Thank you. Um, he said the same thing. In fact, most of the experts there at the summit said exactly that, that, that e-cigs do need to be a lot more addictive than they currently are. And do you know, I would just Alan and I were talking earlier on today, and I hadn't realised, some of you may know that it was my wedding anniversary yesterday, that's by the by, but we went away at the weekend, my bride and I, it's very romantic, don't you know? And we had breakfast in the room on the Monday morning. Um, no more details than that, but suffice it to say, I awoke at 8.30 and I didn't pick my e-cig up until 11 o'clock. That'll tell you how addictive they are and you know the levels I use. So there's, there is something in that. That's probably a very <coughs> good point to take the adverts, otherwise, I could get me backside smacked for giving me giving away too many details. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes and then we'll have a little bit natter about what's happening in Europe outside of France, i.e. in Brussels. Yeah. <laughs> back in two. in Yorkshire for your e-cig needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv And we're back in the room. Uh, I'm Dave Dawn. This is VT Talk. We have Alan DePau and we have Sav with us tonight. And I've just heard that I pronounced Jacques Louezek correctly because Jacques in chat and he's confirmed that. That's brilliant. That. And we've had some more good news. Good news! The bus trip's full. 
if you wanted to go with Nicky Sinclair over to Brussels to see what is there, you cannot. Not anymore, because the bus is full. Right up to the door. Did you see that? That was poetry, that was. <laughs> that wasn't very good poetry, but it was poetry. No, it really wasn't very good poetry. Well, I'm better at limericks. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, there was a young man from Dundee that was stung on the neck by a wasp. When asked if it hurt, he said, no, not a bit. It can do it again if it likes. There you go, perfect limerick. No wrong with Absolutely that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it makes about as much sense as the TPD. Very true. Do you, yes. see, do you see what I did there? It's probably funnier as well. Yeah, oh God, yes, it's definitely funnier. There's, there's no as serious as the TPD. So yes, pleased to be able to report that Nicky Sinclair's bus trip to Brussels to make a point is full it's going ahead kudos to everybody that's going on that you have my undying gratitude and give them one for me absolutely robert gleave and chat has just said he got the last seat <laughs> he got the last seat he got the last seat does he know that that means he's, he's got to buy the, the bus he's well no he's got to buy the booze for everybody oh he does now and the bad news is kitson's going yeah and that that, that lad's got to throw it like a sink it really does. Yes. <laughs> Take plenty of money, mate. You'll need it. Actually, <laughs> it's shocking. We shouldn't really say things like that about Dave. But, <gasps> but it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> he can teach me how to drink. He's that good. Let's let's <laughs> let's blast on with some of the stuff that's been happening now. Many many people have wondered about the lobbying that was going on in Brussels. Um, and who's been behind it all and what's been said and who's been paying for which and who's been grease and who's palm and who's been having words in whose ears. Well, if you go to a link which shall be put in chat at some point, you will get to this page. Uh, it's at asktheeu.org forward slash en forward slash request forward slash sanko underscore cor oh dear god it goes on forever. Sav, you've got the link haven't you? I have, I'm just about to pop it in the chat. Thank you very much. I would do that only I haven't got chat open. Anyway, what this is, is Sanco correspondence with industry lobbyists over TPD July 2013 to December 2013. Neil McLaren, who's part of uh, the ESIG forum, ECF, made this access to information request to health and consumers Sanco. And look, there's a tick. The request was successful. And there's what he's asked for. Um, and here's all the excuses why they weren't going to do it straight away from somebody called Barbara Wilski, who's the Administrative Coordination Assistant for Access to Documents, Director of General Health and Consumers, Sanko. There you go. And then there's all sorts of little bits of letters and what have you here to say why we're not going to give you it <coughs> now and why we've got to wait. And basically what it actually boils down to was they needed to know what they had to redact. And then there's a whole host of PDFs. And in actual fact, they seem to be appearing um, one after the other. And over time, there's more and more stuff coming up. But this is mostly to do with Dominic Schnickels in Sanco um, and various different tobacco companies and pharmacy companies. Here's one from Caresta, the Cooperation Centre for Scientific Research relative to tobacco and all of its bump and stuff that's there and all of the, the kind of information that they've been sending. And I'm here to tell you, I got hold of this earlier on today, and there are something like, did we count them up, Sav? 39, I think. 39 and counting. I'll just do a refresh on the page to see. And yet, yeah, 39 and counting. Let's go to the last one. I haven't actually got there yet. But look at this. That top line, dear Sophie, thanks. Sounds good. Dominic. It's not very formal, is it? GSK Medical and Regulatory has done a detailed analysis on Article 18. We have shared it with our trade association, J&J &J and Novartis, and I am awaiting comments. In any event, I'm keen to share it with you and do so shortly. We can then speak if you have questions. Thanks and kind regards. Um, and you can see that all of this is about what GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, and Johnson & Johnson and Novartis think about Article 18. 
The funny thing about it is, of course, I don't recall Dominic Schnickels giving me a bell or dropping me an email or giving no. anybody. You did, you did you get one, Alan? No, absolutely not. Did you get one, Sav? I did not. No. I'm dare be, I dare bet nobody in chat got one either to say, what do you think of Article 18? And yet GSK does. Johnson & Johnson does. Novartis does. Is there something wrong here? I think it stinks. There's a rabbit away. A big mm. style. I, I'm, I'm thinking Idus didn't either. No, we get no answers. Or Cassie? N nobody. Oh, Cassie, you mean? Yeah. I, I'm not sure what the Trade Association in France got. Well, I would imagine the same as Aceta. I see nothing. Because there's nothing on there from Aceta either. Go on, Sav, I know you've got something. I can say by the look on your face, because that's, <laughs> that's the, I'm not happy, I've got something to say. So, go on. Uh, well, again, all chat have confirmed no, they got nothing. They were not um, consulted in this. But Moonlit has said redacting bits doesn't sound like a very free freedom of information request. Uh, Mark Shaw has said Teveka, proud members of Cor Coresta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Entropy. Oh, I'll try that again. Entropy seventy two said, "In what way are GSK officially involved in the TPD? They supply neither tobacco nor NCD, so why are they being consulted at all?" Well, yes, exactly. Why on earth would a medical, medicinal, pharmaceutical company have any input into the tobacco products directive? It makes absolutely no bloody sense. Whatever. I've just picked up. I'm trying to read this this thing through and obviously what they've done as you'll be able to see um of course they've redacted who it was also sent to um dear sophie many thanks it says here this is mr snickles i will have a look and in case of questions i will get back to you kind regards dominic and she says dear dominic this was before he replied F fyi Attached is what has been sent to date to all member state representatives in Brussels ahead of the council meeting tomorrow. We can speak at your convenience. Again, these people have got access to folks that we, we elect them, we pay them, we keep them there, or not, as the case may be, and the buggers don't ask us about it. It's not right, is it, Alan? Go on, have a rant. Well, you know, we also wrote, and I say we, that's Edus uh, Eka from the UK, and in all, I think it was 11 associations from across Europe representing vapors. We wrote to the President of the European Parliament, um, as recommended, in fact, by um, Martin Callanan. Yes. Uh, back on 6th of February, uh, a, a formal letter, um, a courteous letter, and um, did we get a reply? Have we even received an acknowledgement? Nothing. So it, they, they it, speak to the pharmaceutical industry and um, no doubt, and we know that the uh, tobacco people are lobbying hard. We, the users, are, are, are ignored to the extent that it, it smacks of disdain. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. We're, we're, we're ordinary citizens. There are millions of us. Never mind us. Well, yes, exactly, quite. I mean, th 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 this is this is the, the the big bloody point, isn't it? You would, w can we talk about what you shared with me earlier on today? Those figures that you had for users and absolutely. Well, you remind everybody. Tell everybody what it is. Well, it's not remind because they won't know. I, I'm, do you know how we haven't been able to win rugby, and we're not doing very well in cricket? And I've been having a quick look at what's going on in Sochi. And these continental types are beating us at everything. Well, yep. Fran France has beaten us into a cocked hat in numbers as well. Go on, tell them, Alan, I'll let you. Well, in fact, these figures, um, I, I thank Jack Wizek again for having provided them. Uh, uh, the OFDT in France, which is the observatory that uh, looks at, would you believe, drug addiction, um, has conducted a survey, a questionnaire um, sent over the phone to some uh, a bit over 2,000 people, mm -hmm. a representative uh, sample of uh, French people about electronic cigarettes. And um, the figures are quite startling. The, the OFDT doesn't seem inclined to publish them. They don't seem perhaps very happy with the results. <laughs> <laughs> Un under EU law, of course, 
I have to say, they're going to have to because the results of every study will have to be transparent. That's, that's, that's coming through in EU law. So we do need them for some things. So they're not going to be able to bury it. But, but please, carry on, carry on. Well, I, I asked um, David earlier on to, to guess at the number of people in France who have just uh, uh, simply tried an electronic cigarette once or many times. And I'm afraid David was well out because 18% uh, of, of the French population aged 15 and above, 18%, have tried, experimented the electronic cigarette. That means, let me just check this figure, uh, over 9 million people in a population of some 66, uh, slightly less for metropolitan France, have tried the electronic cigarette. Of them, over 3 million are regular users. Good grief. Of them, about 1.7 million use electronic cigarettes every single day. Uh huh. And of them, fi about 560,000 have become exclusive users, not hybrids. They only vape on electronic cigarettes and no longer touch tobacco. I mean, those figures are, are, are really tremendous, and I'm quite sure that we've overtaken the UK. Yes, and that's a good point at which to just knock Alan off altogether. We've been beaten into a cocked hat again. <laughs> it's 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 actually mind blowing when you think about it that eighty two percent of the population of France, some of which a large proportion of which I assume will be non smokers, have yet to try them, and a large proportion of smokers in France have yet to try e cigs. But look at the uptake that you've got there. And that, that 500 and however many thousand, that over About half a million. thousand are exclusive users. That will be growing, though, as more and more of the, the daily users become exclusive ESIG users. I think that's fascinating. That kind of data is, is very useful. Of course, there will be certain factions that will take that and twist it to mean something entirely other than what it does mean. But what it does point out is that e-cigs are phenomenally successful at what they do, which is providing an alternative way to do what you used to do, but with a much, much reduced risk profile. Do you want to bring chat in at the minute, or shall we wait until after the adverts? I've got a couple of things I'll bring in from chat, but I do want to say those figures give me goosebumps. That's fab. Did I, you, that's brilliant. Did you get a children down your back? I did. I got like, brought my goosebumps. It's like, wow. But, do, uh, do, you ever, do, you ever, do you ever get those when I give you a Skype? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Shaw has said, and those figures, that's why they're scared. It's terrifying them and their corporate chums. Mm -hmm. And Disco Des Wilkinson said, and the NRT manufacturers say that reduction in smoking is down to them. <laughs> yes, quite. And that, that could well be why GSK and Johnson & Johnson and Novartis were quite so keen. To be, uh, to be talking to Dominic Schnickels in Brussels. Ponder on that while we take the adverts. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
Ah, oh, yes. We, we, we probably should allow the talking over the ads because what we've just been discussing... No. That's, no. that's apparently uh, chat is becoming quite competitive now. What they've been saying, Sav? Ah, uh, yeah, they, they definitely want our figures now. And there was a couple of mentions of rugby. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry to, br- I'm sorry to bring sport into it. I really am. I, it's, it's not where I like to go. Uh, we've, we've got more good news, though. It's all good. It's all good at the minute. And today has been an enjoyable day. An enjoyable day prior to Valentine's Day is not bad. So, wedding anniversary, enjoyable day, Valentine's Day, three nice days on the trot, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. But have a look at this. There's the place to go to, it's sagepub.com, t-a-w.sagepub.com. Um, the link again will go into chat. I, I am. I find it again. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sav. It's all right, got it. Um, but th- this, is, this is what Dr. Farsalinos has come up with. Um, and it's, I'll read the abstract. It says, electronic cigarettes are a recent development in tobacco harm reduction. They are marketed as less harmful alternatives to smoking. Awareness and use of these devices has grown exponentially in recent years, with millions of people currently using them, as Alan has just ably demonstrated in France. We do need the UK figures. <laughs> This systematic review appraises existing laboratory and clinical research on the potential risks from electronic cigarette use compared with the well-established devastating effects of smoking tobacco cigarettes. Currently available evidence indicates that electronic cigarettes are by far a less harmful alternative to smoking and significant health benefits are expected in smokers who switch from tobacco to electronic cigarettes. Research will help make electronic cigarettes more effective as smoking substitutes and will better define and further reduce residual risks from use to as low as possible by establishing appropriate quality control and standards. And the whole thing is free. You'll see here, it says full text PDF. If you click on it and you are not registered as a um, a Sage Journals member, it'll say this journal is currently free to access for registered individuals. You can register and then you can get the full text of the PDF down there to view. Can I just jump in with that? We've also got the full details, the full PDF on our um, forum as well. Kat's just linked up to that in the chat as well. Well, there you see, the team, the team, they do all this. So you've got two ways. You can get it from our forum or you can get it from the Sage Publications thing um, as and do both, actually do both because that will show the amount of interest that there is in this and, and that's, that's also good to see. I'm going to tell you it's not easy reading. In fact it's far from easy reading because it's full of technical stuff and, and it's all couched in the kind of language that the researchers and the experts use. Have, have you had a chance to have a look at it yet, Owen? No, not yet. It, it's, Kat said it best when she said it's not bedtime reading. Would you agree, Sav? Oh, it's definitely not bedtime reading, no. The, it's, what, what he's done, what Dr. Farsalinos has done is he's gone through, I think it's 112 112 or 115 studies I've speed read it and every last argument that we've had from the antis is rebutted and the actual fact of the matter researched fact of the matter this is not conjecture this is not um, what's the word I'm looking for anecdotal evidence this is proper real proper evidence Everything says what that abstract just said. These things are as close to harmless as you're going to get. And I think we probably need to be making sure that there's a particular circus coming up that needs to be made aware of this. Um, and we'll get there in a little minute. But Alan, when Edus get hold of this and have a look at it, I, I've got to say one of the things that I've... I've thoroughly enjoyed over the last few months has been this propensity that Edus has for coming up with beautifully crafted, superbly worded and very, very well delivered documentation 
to those who would rule us. Take that as a, I don't know how much it, how much you had to do with that, whether it's you or whether it's your colleagues or what, I don't know. But I'm thinking there's going to be a cracker comes out of this one. Yes, um, we, we, we need to read it first. I saw it was, I only saw it today, in fact. Mm. And, uh, there's a lot of meat in there. It, it confirms what we've been saying, that the big problem is that we're not being listened to. Indeed, um, indeed. What we have to find and what we will find are, are ways of expressing um, extreme discontent. At the moment, um, we're cooperating a lot at European level uh, with the other associations. And um, we're considering a way of uh, uh, informing MEPs of the way we have been treated with complete disdain, we being the vapors of Europe, mm -hmm. yourselves, ourselves, and um, of telling them that uh, they ought to be very careful uh, of decisions that will certainly, without the slightest question, be contested in courts of law. Absolutely, yes, and, and that they definitely will. I, I can guarantee that 100%. In fact, um, Alan and I were talking earlier on today and we're both looking down the road to see it's the plan B. Well, you've got always got to have a plan B, haven't you? Yes. Um, and, and plan B involves the courts. And at that point, of course, there's going to be some fundage required uh, because, unfortunately, court action never, ever comes cheap. It just doesn't that's the way it goes but all of the advice that we've been getting is that if it goes to court we'll win and I just don't understand why MEPs don't realize that however what I will say is um, that documentation that's just been produced by Dr Farsalinos you definitely need to send to your MP your MEP and anybody else that you think might have something to say and this at the moment seems to include bloody councils that are instituting bans on vaping here, there and everywhere at the drop of a hat. Um, they need to be informed, they need to be told in no uncertain terms. If you like, this is a call to action. I think it's time, it's, we're past time, that we got up off our backsides and started making a hell of a noise. Do the keyboard warrior thing, yeah, get all the emails and everything sent out, but I think it might not be a bad idea to print this out and go and stand outside councils and stand outside MPs' offices and MEPs' offices in Parliament, handing it out to them as yeah. they go. And let's, you know, make polite nuisances of ourselves. Is that the right, is that the right term? Polite nuisances? You know, just, just be seen. Do it. Get it? And somebody did also come up with the idea, um, and I can't remember who it was, and I do apologise, it, but it's a good one. Whenever you send an email to your MP or your MEP, copy it to your local paper and the Sun and the Mail and the Mirror and the Guardian and the Express and the Independent and any other newspapers that happen to exist. Just let's, let's test this email system that, uh, that happens over the interwebs and see if we can make it fall over by the number that we sell. Uh, send, not sell, send. What a damn good idea. Sav? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of comments about the, the study. All chemists said it's a very good paper by um, Faustina and Pelosa. It's packed with facts and a good bibliography. Mitch Dogger said excellent work by Dr. F. et al. as always. And Nelly Scroggett says 112 clinical studies and we're still here. There's no evidence. And we still, we still also hear, and we don't know what's in them. Mm. Uh huh. Which brings me, although it's against me better judgment, whoops, where is it? To this thing, which is Ash Scotland. This is coming up April the 3rd, 9.30 to uh, quarter past four at the Grand Central Hotel, Glasgow. Do you fancy going there? <laughs> I'd love to go. We'll have a trip up. It's a hundred and fifty pound a head, you know. Sorry, Alan, Scottish. Yes. 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 It's being chaired by Donald Henderson, head of public health policy at the Scottish government, who will give a welcome and introduction. Then, and please, people, make sure you've got buckets handy. Sheila Duffy, chief executive of Ash Scotland, the rise of the e-cigarette. She's probably going to just play highlights in of uh, Choi's programme. Then Linda Bald, 
a well-known supporter of e-cigarettes. Katrina Rook, twice. Katrina Rook, Katrina Rook. So bad they named her twice. Who was another, um, yeah, another great supporter of e-cigs. Nancy Doherty, who apparently is a stop smoking service manager. I'm not going to say anything about her. Brian Pringle, who does both jumpers and crisps. Um, <coughs> who's doing the view from a drug and alcohol service. Then there'll be facilitated table discussions. They're going to be talking about the furniture. Um, and then they'll be having an overview of talking about the furniture. Then Professor Jeff Collin, who's Professor of Global Health Policy at the University of Edinburgh. I don't know him. But if he's talking about the tobacco industry and e-cigarettes, the business strategy acquisitions influencing public health and regulation, he's another big supporter of e-cigs, obviously. Marissa de Andrade, yes, another big supporter at Sterling. She knows Jared Hastings very, very well. He's another big supporter. Um, yeah, I have the feeling. Need to be there. Now, when you apply, <laughs> it asks for conflicts of interests, believe it or not. And it may be that when I uh, put my request in for a reservation in a seat, they might turn around and say, you cannot come because you don't agree with what we're going to say. And then I'll write back and say, how the hell do you know? Because I don't know what you're going to say and you don't know whether I agree with it or not. I mean, I don't as a matter of principle, but you never just know. So we might have a look at that. Oh, look, Sav's typing. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, people had a lot to say about this one. Oh, do tell. Uh, Becky says, brace yourself, here comes the Think of the Children conference. Her <laughs> children! <laughs> Dan Piddy said, I demand entry, nothing about us without us. Mm -hmm. Whitbread up 69 says, balance then. Oh, yes. Entropy 72 says, we need to protest this. That's There's going to be cameras there. We need to be there. Mm -hmm. And Gillis has said, nice to say it's going to be a balanced discussion. Mm. Exactly right. Sorry, did you have something else? Um, as again, as people go on, uh, Moon has said, conflict of interest, you mean I give a damn and I'm not bought and paid for. <laughs> well said that, man. Exactly. Well said that, man. Do you get this kind of thing happening in France? Have you got an equivalent of ash over there that it, that is completely stupid and totally unbalanced? Did I say that out loud? I do apologise, but I meant it. We have the OFT, um, which is not completely stupid and not completely unbalanced. They were 12 months ago, but uh, we have published documents um, signed jointly by themselves and ourselves in uh, strong favour of electronic cigarettes, certainly when we were fighting medicalisation. So, no, OFT is, um, is an ally for most of the way. I don't know if they're an ally for all of the way that we want to follow. But um, they, they have a completely different uh, discourse to Ash. I, I wonder whether it would be possible to get, you know, representatives of OFT to go across to Glasgow and, and have a natter there. I mean, I would love to think that the, uh, the likes of Jacques Louezec and uh, Jean-Francois Etter and various others would spark the 150 quid and go to this thing. Um, because I think otherwise they're just going to get their heads together and come up with a plank actually two short planks probably nailed together because that looks to be about as balanced as a one-legged man in a hammock other examples of complete lack of balance also exist but you know what i mean sav you're nodding again i'm taking it chat's voluble to mate chat oh and there's something else that's just been brought up in chat um i'll just read the last comment i've got here um entropy 72 says it's not that ash are unbalanced generally Sorry, unbalanced. Generally, they're behind E6. They're just so damn two-faced. I think. So, I think actually, we we do need to draw the lines of difference between Ash Scotland and Ash UK or Ash London. Um, we we do find ourselves, Sav and I, particularly in the presence of Ash London, fairly frequently these days. Mm -hmm. And the the people that we're dealing with, with one or two exceptions are sensible people and in fact the ash, ash uk stance is very much that e-cigs are a damn good thing they're just not quite as keen to see the market decide as we are they'd much i think much prefer medicinal regulation but i do think they need to be flexing their muscles around about now because ash scotland seems to have gone rogue 
Sheila Duffy particularly. She doesn't appear to have a good word to say about e-cigs and how they can possibly expect to have a dialogue or a summit on e-cigs without having all possible views represented and I'm not seeing any in that program is beyond me. That is propaganda at its very, very worst. Um, and I'm not sure I like it. Well, actually, I am sure I don't bloody like it. It's that easy. Sorry, Sav, I interrupted. Right, well, I'm going to actually change the subject because there's something that was put in chat that I feel we have to talk about because it is, it's just awful. And it's by Bad Chat. And he says, My granddaughter has today had a lady come to her school to do a talk on drugs and smoking. Anyway, at the end of the talk, the lady got an e-cig and a small 10ml bottle of liquid from her bag and told them they are as bad as real cigarettes and that the bottle of liquid was the equivalent of 500 real cigarettes. What? Telling that at schools. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to make a request here. Can you get me details of the organisation that this lady was representing? Um, the name of the school, uh, and I'm going to look into that because that is wrong on so many levels. It's it's not only lying; it's likely to send kids off down completely the worst path and I'll tell you for why. Very simply if you are presented with two options one of which as in this case is going to set you back 150-200 quid and the other one is going to set you back £8.50 or whatever a packet of fags is these days. If they are touted as being as bad as each other you will always go for the cheaper option. That is an undeniable fact. Very, very few people are stupid enough to pay £150 for something that they can get for £8.50 when they are told that there is no difference in danger between the two. And any child in a school is bound to be thinking about experimenting with all sorts of things. And it's not just smoking. It's not just drinking or sex. It's, it's motocross. It's climbing mountains. It's jumping out of aeroplanes with parachutes on. They come up with all kinds of things that they want to do. And for some Egypt to go into a school and spout that level of bollocks is beyond the pill. Please get me the details. Tweet them to me or email them to me at hifistud at me.com and I will personally take up the cudgels and find out who her boss is and I'll, I will have something to say because that is just wrong. And I, I'm not going to sit here and allow it to happen. Sorry, rant over. Would you agree, Alan? My God, I'm just thinking of the child going back home and saying, hey, Mum, hey, Dad. You know those e-cigs you're trying? <laughs> They're completely useless. You might as well <laughs> stay on tobacco. Well, that's that's exactly the point. Exactly the point. Sav? Yeah, um, chat of uh, Midge Dog says, misinform my kids about this and feel my wrath. And Becky has said, this is the sort of misinformation that's making one of her smoking friends refuse point blank to try an e-cig. Well, quite. And that, that actually is... That's quite spoiled me, dear. Mm, yeah, I know, it's hard. I, 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 I'm going to put an appeal out to Ash UK, to Ash Scotland, Ash Wales, Cancer Research UK, and all of the others, that have, and the BMA particularly, and anybody else that's put out misinformation. Please, 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 man up. You are wrong. You are causing harm. Put it right and let people know that e-cigs are not anywhere close to being as dangerous as tobacco or cigarettes or as risky. Couch it in any terms you like. They are, as Dr. Farsalinos has shown, much, much, much less risky than smoking lit tobacco. That doesn't prevent people from having the choice to do either one. But please, for God's sake, give them the right, proper, true information. Otherwise... 30 years hence, there will be deaths, early deaths, that should be on your conscience. Put it right. The time is now. Sav, last word from chat, as ever. Well, actually, I'm going to have to apologise to chat because I'm stealing the last word yet again. <laughs> And I'm actually giving the last word to Davy Malik because um, Davy sent me a message saying, "Could I ask Alan and also any of um, 
any other vapor that's not in the UK. If any other member states, or if they could help with getting the information out to any other member states about the, the protest on the 5th of March for Nicky Sinclair, not necessarily the bus and everything, but what's actually going to be happening on the day and get as many people there from as many member states as possible. There you go. Alan? I'm not on the ball on that one, and it sounds interesting. Um, I understand Nicky Sinclair for um, uh, European Friends, um, one of the British MEPs is an extremely staunch ally and has been uh, virtually since the beginning of electronic cigarettes. Yes. Yeah, a very courageous one and that she's organizing a trip to Strasbourg? No, it's Brussels. Brussels on the yeah. 5th. On the 5th of March. Yes, they go out on the 5th and I believe the protests start, well, they, they've got to do a, a, a journey round, they've got to have a look round the place at 9 o'clock and then I think it's 10 or 10.30 the, uh, the actual protest will take place in the square outside the European Parliament. And it would be brilliant, absolutely brilliant, if Continental Vapors, our Continental Cousins, if you can, you know, get there, great. Swell the numbers. We, there, there are be 55 going on the bus, because that's how many a bus holds, isn't it? Yes, I think so, yeah. Um, so there'll be 55 on the bus. If we can get another 550... It'd be brilliant. Wouldn't that just be marvellous? Just be marvellous. I'll, I'll give you all the details later on, Alan. Yes, um, please. And, 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 you know, I'm sure they'll be available on our forum anyway. Um, but yes, yes, that would be great. It would be brilliant. And just because the bus is full doesn't mean you can't jump on Eurostar and go yourself, you know. Just thought I'd point that out. Are there any further last words from... <laughs> We're getting a lot of people going, is there a French version of VTTV? If not, why not? Okay. <laughs> right. They want the French show. We've got the German show, then I want the French show. Well, Alan and I did have a little nutter about this earlier on, didn't we? It's a good question. Um, I think there are some broadcasts run by retailers, and um, it's a good question. It's a good question, and we will look into that. Well, I'm going to get wrong off Chris for saying this, but if we can help, the vehicle is here. Um, and I think it's a damn good idea. Yep. In fact, I'd like to see not just French, but Spanish, Italian, Greek. We already have German. Um, all of the various different languages. I would, I would love to see that happening. That would be marvellous. Absolutely. And as you say, if we can help, we will. Absolutely right. Yes, that's... Have you seen the time? I know, I know. I've just had a message of car. Oh, dear. Are we both going to get wrong? No, I think it's just me so far. <laughs> Oh, that's all right then. <laughs> no, I'll stick up for you. It wasn't, wasn't a, it was, us, was me gobbing off, it's my fault. Um, I, I need to say a big thank you to Alan for, for coming to join us. Um, and I'd, I'd like to invite you back uh, just on a, a fairly regular basis if you're up for that. Well, thank you very much, Sam, and thank you, David, for, for a wonderful programme. It really is. Oh, well, thank, thank you so much. But yes, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have you back. It's, it's great. Um, I must admit, I was just quite surprised. You haven't got the slightest trace of a French accent at all. I, I can try my best. Uh, C'est en français que j'ai un accent anglais, malheureusement. Ah, oh, oui, oui. La plume de ma tante sur le pont d'Avignon. <laughs> yeah, I'll meet you there, David. Yeah, absolutely, too, right. A couple of glasses of nice red Merlot. Yes. Yes, that would be great. Um, so it's a big thanks to Alan de Pau for coming along to join us tonight and my usual thanks to Sav and the team behind her for sorting chat and, uh, and keeping everything running through and running as smoothly as it does. But the biggest thanks always go to our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in um, and don't forget on, well, there's, there should be DJ Bobo tonight, but he's not, is he? No. Because he's... Um. I think Tim's filling in for DJ Bobo because uh, he killed his Mac. Yes, he's he's deaded his Mac and he sent it sent it off to get it de deaded, but it's not deaded. It's de -deaded. way for council. Aye, it's 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 gone to see its mum to get <laughs> yeah. it, to get its head stroked and told there there pet. Um, so yes, our Y four radio tonight and tomorrow night um, and Saturday night and then Sunday, Dave's title box is back on with Dave Kitson. On Monday. The Here's Hour will be back. God only knows what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something. Then Tuesday, Marco van Basten with Vapor Scene, followed by our German language programme, DE Talk, which I'm hoping sometime in the future we can also say, and our French language programme, uh, 
Paro on Isig would be on. Um, where was it? Then Wednesday, team talk with Dr. Farsalinos. Yes. Yes, get your seat early. It'll run yep. over. It'll yep. run over. It's bound to. And then VT Talk will be back next Thursday night. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We certainly have. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget, vape on, vape hard, and nil carborundum illegitimi. Or, to put it in French, don't let the bastards grind you down. Until you we see you next time from all of us here. Thanks for watching and say, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.